But more importantly, you'll be helping a child, uh, a kid like Devin, who's not such a small child anymore. You are 12, but you've certainly been through more at 12 than most people should go through in their entire life. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you were diagnosed with a brain tumor at age 11. Is that right? 10. At 10. At 10. Yep. And as of just a couple of months ago, uh, three surgeries, 30 radiation mm -hmm. treatments. Is that roughly? Yep. That's exact. That's right. <laughs> um, and you're continuing to receive treatment uh, here at All Children's Hospital. Um, you know, Dad, when did you first know something wasn't right with uh, Devin? Um, in June of 2014, she started saying she had headaches every day, and she never has any problems, and they wouldn't go away no matter, you know, children's aspirin or whatever. They wouldn't go away every day. They just stayed. And we had her checked at by her doctor, and it was we just had just moved to Florida a few months before that, and she's doctor said it's getting hot, and kids get headaches when it gets hot out, so they said hydrate her. Yeah. Well, that lasted about a week, and she still had headaches. Then we were going to go to Disney World, and she threw up that morning. We thought, well, she's excited about going to Disney World. Oh boy. She threw up a few more times at Disney World. We took her back to the doctor, and they said that still might be hydration. Check on that. She and I were out on a bike ride, and she said, Daddy, I see two of you. Yeah. And that is not part of hydration. Yeah. We took her to the doctor. They gave her an MRI, got the results. I remember at about 2.15 on a Wednesday afternoon, the doctor said, your baby girl has a brain tumor. We were at All Children's two hours later and checked in. And so how, uh, how does a dad go to a 10, 11-year-old girl and say, guess what? Uh, We've got a big problem, hon. You know, she knew she was having some problems, and we didn't really address it as. We just said you have something inside your head, and that's causing the problems, and they need to look at it, and they may need to go take it out. Wow. We didn't use any other words other than that in the beginning. And so um, one of the things that I keep saying and that I've witnessed being part of this Radiothon eight years is that, and I really don't know how they do it, All Children's Hospital has this amazing ability to go okay, Devin and Jack, here's what's going on. Here's what we're going to do about it. Here's what you're going to go through. And you go from panic to, you know, okay, maybe this is going to be okay. Okay, they yeah. seem to know what they're doing. And they, they seem to have this overwhelming ability to put people at ease. It's not the hospital that goes, all right, what insurance do you have? <laughs> Fill out this form. Here's Definitely. a clipboard. I mean, everything is about Devin's care yes. and let's get Devin better. And yeah. um as a parent, uh, the last thing in the world you should probably be worrying about is paperwork and those other things, right? I we mean, didn't worry about it at all. You know, we sat down. It was Dr. Tua to perform the surgery, and he showed us what was going on. You know, that night our heads were spinning around, looked like yeah. crazy, but he showed us. You know, they're affiliated with Johns Hopkins. He called some of his surgeon friends up in the, the Baltimore, D.C. area yeah. and said, what have you done with things like this? Because hers was, you know, a brain tumor is not unique in the first place, but hers was even more unique than any other one right and he said how how, do, how should i handle it i have some ideas but he talked to other specialists and got some great in, input from them and she went and had surgery the next morning wow is that scary yes it was very scary and so how is your can we talk a little bit about your experience at the hospital Devin, and kind of some of the stuff you've gone through at least the parts that you're comfortable talking about <laughs> well what i what i like about all children is before they do what they're going to do, they tell the patient step by step of what they're going to do. So it makes the patient feel more comfortable when they do it. Or when they put them down for surgery, they tell them what they're going to do. And yeah, just before they do anything to a patient, they always tell them what they're going to do step by step. Yeah, I mean, three surgeries, 30 radiation treatments, and four rounds of chemo, um, and barely, and you're 12, is that right? I mean, that's I'm 11. All, you're not even 12 years old. That's a ton to go through, just a mm. ton. And, and you look good. I mean, you seem to be in good spirits. I mean, I'm, I'm always amazed by, you know, we as adults, I think, sometimes don't handle things the yes. best way, but children have this amazing strength where they just kind of take it head on and deal with it. I'm always amazed by that. Yeah, we, we've talked about that, just how resilient she is. And, uh, you know, she, she missed all the fifth grade last year, and she's doing fifth grade again this year and just loves being back with kids and doing things again. As I say, where are we at now with treatment, and where's the prognosis? Um, and um, uh, The treatments are all done. Uh, 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 only thing that's left is I, the doctors need to, need to know when my kidneys get better so I can take this 
MRI. <laughs> yeah. yeah the they put a special to... drug to help her do an MRI that takes an even better picture. Yeah. And her kidneys were compromised. She was actually on dialysis for three days, her last round of chemo, because yeah. it was just so invasive. And so with the MRI, they do a little extra thing called contrast, and your kidneys have to be able to handle it. Yeah. And since they were compromised, her kidneys aren't back to functioning perfectly yet. So she can't have this special MRI. She's doing regular MRI. She's going to do those about every three months for about a year. Yeah, I don't, you know, a lot of people, unless you've been through it and had family members that have gone through it, you could take a totally healthy person and run them through chemo and it would wreck them. And, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, kids that have, you know, tumors and cancer. And so in addition to that, their body is fighting that. And then you, I mean, it's a, it's a yeah. major ordeal oh, to yeah. go through those treatments. It yeah. really is. My sister's a nurse and she says chemo is, is terrible. She says its yeah. job is to destroy things and it does. And and her, her last three, two MRIs have been clean, and we okay. are just so thankful for that. And she's got another one probably coming up in uh, late December. That's good. That's good. And see, this is the exact, I think, example of what we've been talking about. In 1980, 1970, like when these years that old people like me grew up, Devin, mm -hmm. a lot of times if somebody had what you had, there wasn't really much they could do. But because years ago, people sitting in their car, just like the people listening to us right now, they gave money and research was done and better treatment was done. And, you know, now that all children is a uh, Johns Hopkins hospital, they share that research and they, they've, they were amazing before, but they're even one notch above that now, because like you said, they, they will call other specialists other places and together they have more answers yep. um, and that's why it's so vitally important that you give people years ago gave which led to better treatments which led to people surviving and now here we sit in 2015 which Devin is I have no doubt you're gonna be fine hun and I know you've been <laughs> through a ton but you'll look back on this one day and um, we're, we're close right we're yep. in the home stretch yep. you know yep. mm -hmm. um, but you're the exact example of why it's so important to give and keep in mind um, Every single cent stays right here where you and I live. I hope you never got to come to this place, but it, <laughs> on the off chance you end up where it, it's always you think it's not going to be you. Yeah. Everybody thinks oh, that's not going to happen to me. And like you said, you're out on a bike ride with your daughter, and then you know something's wrong. Yeah. Life changes that quick. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important you pick up that phone and help us. 1-800-270-8642. Maybe if Devin gives the phone number out, it'll compel you to stop what you're doing and... Uh, pick up that phone and help us. Like I said, we only need to get 103 more before we get out of here to stay on pace to hit our goals. So, Devin, maybe if you give the phone number, those phones will ring and we'll do what we came here to do, huh? Okay, 1-800-270-8642. 1-800-270-8642. Well, Devin, I hope uh, this thing goes exactly perfect from here on out. You don't have to do any more of those hardcore treatments. I hope it goes that way, hon. Yeah, I think it was my second or third. I met this boy. Um, he his name was. I think they interviewed him earlier today. Yeah, Cole Iker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cole. <laughs> um, yeah, he was just walking down the hallway. My dad asked, "If are you Cole Iker?" And he said, "Yeah." And we, him and I, talked, and he had the same treatment, same, almost the same tumor. And what's such a coincidence is his last name and my last name. His last name is Iker, and ours is Ike. It's so so funny how how that's so such a coincidence. Well, normally I would tell you to stay away from boys, but I've met this Cole that you speak of, and I'm okay with it. He's a great yeah, he's kid, a very yeah. nice great family. Boy. Yes, very he nice is. Boy. He's very nice. It's amazing you, people you would hope you wouldn't have to meet. But yeah. we've met through this situation. Life is a pretty yeah. crazy thing sometimes, that's for sure. Yeah, and he was in the movie Dolphin Tales 2 in, like, one of the backgrounds. Oh, was he really? Yeah. Yep. He gave me um, a thick prayer book one of the times he visited me, visited me, and a shirt from Dolphin Tales 2 that one of the main characters gave him. That's he amazing. He said it was... Looked a little girlish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I admire your strength, Devin. You're the exact example of the amazing things this hospital does. You're the exact example of the strength that I hope I hope everybody can have your strength as they're going through things. Um, Dad, I'm sure sorry you had to go through this, but um, I think we're going to be okay. I do. I mean, one thing we've said about all children's is we've always felt like, even though there's 
kids everywhere with problems. We've always felt like we were the only ones in the hospital is the way they treated us. Yeah, oh, man. That's, I'm always amazed, Devin. I really am. Um, 1-800-270-8642. If Devin's story doesn't compel you to pick up the phone and help us, I don't know what is wrong with you, to be honest with you. So let's do this now, Wanu. 1-800-270-8642. Just $15 a month. Become a monthly miracle maker. We'll put you in the, the running for that trip to the Stagecoach Music Festival. But more importantly, you'll be helping save the life of a child. It sounds cliche, but you give 15, I give 15, Ben gives 15, we got 45. And you know, enough people add up. We have new research. We have new treatment. We save a life. And before we wrap up, Devin, is there anything that you else that you would like to say to the people listening that are stuck in traffic that are kind of on the fence going, should I help out the hospital? I don't know. I've got to buy a latte on my way home. Maybe I should do that <laughs> instead. Um, what would you say to them? Um, I would just like to tell them all the people, a lot of people that I met, Cole Eicher, a manager from my favorite Mexican restaurant, Wong, they both donated a whole lot of money for all children. And all the people that are donating, I would like to say thank you for helping the hospital and patients that are in that having, who are struggling through treatments. Will you come back and see us next year? Yeah, I told the nurses and doctors I would always visit them. Okay, we would love to have you at next year's Radiothon, and next year we'll be reporting everything's fine. Yep. And she's probably dating Cole and no, playing I'm soccer. No, I'm not. Lord knows what else. No, I'm not. All right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know. 1-800-270-8642. 1-800-270-8642. I'm hoping you pick up that phone and help us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back from All Children's Hospital.